I would recommend you get your highlighter or borrow one. <laughs> Maybe even a pencil, whatever. So we're going to spend a day or so, we've been talking about velocity here a little bit. I just want to remind you, I know, all the sort of the ins and outs of it kind of thing, so we got a pretty good understanding of what's going on here. So, in everyday language we use speed, words speed and velocity interchangeably. In physics we make a distinction between the two. Very simply, the difference is the velocity is speed in a given direction. You guys already know that, I'm sure, right? Right? Velocity is speed in a given direction. Ooh, can I do this? All right, well, I can't highlight it. So anyways. When we say a car travels at 60 kilometers an hour, we are specifying its speed. But if we say a car moves at 60 kilometers an hour to the north, we are specifying its velocity. Speed is a description of how fast. Velocity is how fast in one direction. Probably all remember that, right? I'm hoping. We'll see in the next session that there are good reasons for the distinction between speed and velocity. So here's a question. The speedometer of a car moving northward reads 60 kilometers an hour. It passes another car that travels southward at 60. Do they have the same speed? Yes. They have the same speed, Gordon. But they do not have the same velocity. In fact, one would be positive and one would be negative. Exactly. The car, I just want to point out to a little uh, drawing on the side here. The car on the circular track may have a constant speed, but it's not a constant velocity because its direction of motion is changing every instant. So if I go out and ran, run the track in exactly 52 seconds because I am now back to 17 years old, I'm not 44 years old because I certainly couldn't run that fast now. But anyways, if I run the track and say a minute, whatever, what would be my average velocity? I ran the whole track all around. What would be my average velocity? 100 meters, 60 seconds. My 400 meters, 60 seconds. What would be my average velocity? I think the velocity is six. Cool. Whatever you did on your calculator, I guarantee you it's wrong. You know how I know it's wrong? Because the average velocity is what? What's my displacement if I go all the way around the track? <clears throat> Zero, I end up exactly where I started. My average velocity was zero. Halfway around the track. If I went halfway around the track, then I'd have to figure out the displacement from there to there. It'd be a vector thing, wouldn't it? We don't want to deal with vectors quite yet. We're getting there, but not on a Monday morning. Not on a Monday morning. So, yes. And it doesn't, does it even matter if it's circular or not? Can it be like an oval like that? As long as I end up exactly where I start, my average velocity is zero. My total displacement, zero. Oh, yeah. Constant velocity. From the def definition of velocity follows that to have a constant velocity requires both constant speed and constant direction. When Usain Bolt runs the 100, has he got constant velocity? Why not? Uh, because the speed does change, right? At the start, he's accelerating. At some point during the race, he's probably running at constant velocity. But, I mean, near the end, well, they say he doesn't slow down, but, you know, sometimes he does. Constant speed means that the motion remains at the same speed. The motion does, the object does not move faster or more slowly. Constant direction means that the motion is in a straight line. The object path does not curve at all. Motion at constant velocity is motion in a straight line at constant speed. Constant velocity is motion in a straight line at constant speed. If either the speed or the direction are both changing, excuse me, then the velocity is considered to be changing. Constant speed and constant velocity are not the same. Right, how it's a body may move at constant speed along a curved path, for example, but it does not move with constant velocity because its direction is changing every instant. Okay? If I get out the rubber stopper on the string and whip it around in a circle, is that constant velocity? No. How come? Direction is changing. Very good, right? In a car, there are three controls that are used to change the velocity. Only one is the gas pedal. Obviously, you press the gas, you go faster. Many of you are familiar with that. The other one is the brake, because you use it to go faster. slow down. And the third one is the steering wheel, because you use it to change the direction. So three things you can use to change a car's velocity. Let's spend a second or so talking about acceleration. And remember, acceleration is vastly understood, I'm afraid. We can change the state of motion of an object by changing its speed, by changing its direction of motion, or changing both. Any of these changes is a change of velocity. 
Sometimes we are interested in how fast the velocity is changing. A driver on a two-lane road who wants to pass another car would like to be able to speed up, pass in the shortest possible time. The rate at which the velocity is changing is called the acceleration. That seems like something to, to highlight, doesn't it? Maybe I can do that. Sorry about that. What kind of vehicles have good acceleration? No, not fast ones. Motorcycles. They can go from stop to really fast, really quick, right? Big trucks, they go from stop to fast in a long period of time. They take a lot. Trains have incredibly slow acceleration, right? Okay, They don't get up to speed very fast. Trains go fast, though, right? It's not about how fast you can go. It's how fast you can get how fast you can go. So that's acceleration. You're right. That is very good acceleration. It's not near as bad on this screen. It's nice and yellow here. Here it looks more like pea soup. Because acceleration is a rate, it is a measure of how fast the velocity is changing per unit of time. And in fact, acceleration is, remember, delta V over delta T. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Oh, now i got to do this. We're all familiar with acceleration in an automobile. The driver depresses the gas pedal, appropriately called the accelerator. Yeah, mine kind of looks like this. I'll do this just anything you can do to just, oh, it's Monday, anything we can do to get out of work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, mine looks just fine here. The driver depresses the gas pedal, appropriately called the accelerator. The passengers then experience acceleration or pickup, as it is sometimes called, as they tend to lurch toward the rear of the car, right? Someone hammers on the gas, you go, way back in your seat, like in an airplane, right? That's a cool feeling, isn't it? That is a cool feeling. The key idea that defines acceleration is change. Whenever we change our state of motion, we are accelerating. A car that can accelerate well has the ability to change its velocity rapidly. A car that can go from 0 to 60 in 5 seconds has a greater acceleration than another that can go from 0 to 80 in 10 seconds. Okay, so a car that can accelerate well has the ability to change the velocity rapidly. A car that can go from 0 to 60 in 5 seconds has a greater acceleration than another that can go from 0 to 80 in 10 seconds. Having a good acceleration is being quick to change and not necessarily fast. Quick to change. Quick to change. Think about institutions. In physics, the term acceleration applies to decreases as well as increases in speed. The brakes of a car can produce large retarding accelerations. That is, they can produce a large decrease per second in speed. This is often called deceleration or negative acceleration. We experience deceleration when the driver of a bus or car slams on the brakes and we tend to lurch forward, right? Darren's driving down the road and he hammers on the brakes, right? And Calvin hits his head on the back. Does that ever happen, Calvin? Thankfully, no. Don't give me any ideas, I would say. Okay? That's also acceleration, right? You don't want that to happen. Acceleration applies to change in direction as well as changes in speed. If you ride around a curve at a constant speed of 50 kilometers an hour, you feel the effects of acceleration as you tend to lurch toward the outside of the curve, right? If Darren's driving and, and Calvin's in the passenger seat and Darren cranks the wheel, Calvin's face goes up against the passenger side window. Does that ever happen, Calvin? No? Don't do that, Darren. You may round the curve at constant speed, but your velocity is not constant because your direction is changing every instant. Your state of motion is changing. You are accelerating. Now you can see why it's important to distinguish between speed and velocity and why acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity rather than speed. Acceleration, like velocity, is directional, which means it is a, starts with a V, vector. Oh, yeah. Vector. Did you miss vectors? <laughs> and most of this book will be concerned only with motion along a straight line, but being grade 12 students, we will deal with two-dimensional motion. When straight line motion is being considered, it's common to use speed and velocity interchangeably. When the direction is not changing, acceleration may be, may be expressed as the rate at which speed changes. Speed and velocity are measured in units of distance per time. The units of acceleration are more complicated. You know this already. 
Since acceleration is the change in velocity or speed per time interval, its units are those of speed per time. If we speed up with a change in direction from 0 to 10 in one second, our change in speed is 10 kilometers per hour in a time interval of one second, and our acceleration would said to be 10 kilometers per hour second. 10 kilometers per hour second. Or you could say 10 kilometers per hour per second, which means every second your speed changes by 10 kilometers per hour. Okay. Now that's not usually the uh, the most common one, right? Oh, I gotta go. The acceleration is 10 kilometers per hour second. Note that a unit of time enters twice, once being the speed, and again for the interval of time in which the speed is changing. If you understand this, you can answer the following question, and we'll just see. We'll just see. So questions three and four. Now, do you guys have the answers on yours too? No. Or did I miss four copy of those? Yeah, I should do that. Is what I should do. Take out the answers. <coughs> Suppose a car moving in a straight line steadily increases its speed each second, first from 35 to 40, and then from 40 to 45, and then from 45 to 50. What is its acceleration? How much is it changing each time? Five kilometers per hour every second. So we would say its acceleration is five kilometers per hour second or five kilometers per hour per second? Yeah, most people do. In number four now, in five seconds, a car moving in a straight line increases its speed from 50 to 65, while the truck goes from rest to 15 in a straight line, which undergoes the greater acceleration. It, it went from 50 to 65, which is a change of 15. The other one went from 0 to 15, also a change of 15, both in the same amount of time. Which one has a greater acceleration? Mark is wrong. Which one, Nicole? The same, exactly. They're the same. Why are they the same? They both, yeah, exactly. They increase the same amount in the same amount of time. It doesn't matter how fast we're going. What matters is how fast your speed changes. Your questions are the only one that answers. True enough. If it was multiple choice, right? Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I should have made a C. Let's say it, right? Yeah? Hmm. The answer is they are the same. In fact, they're both 3. 15 divided by 5, 3 kilometers per hour per second. Well, then it asks, what is the acceleration of each one? Number two. It's number four, really. All right. So I think that's a pretty good kind of review, kind of generally, for the idea of velocity. Uh, I'm going to stop talking because you guys are tired of listening to me, right? Thanks for agreeing on that one.